This is the RX 6500 XT, one of the most hated cards from 2022. The reason was that this card was released during the GPU mining crisis and it was a laptop GPU repurposed for desktop usage and insanely clocked. The downside was that it was limited to PCIe 4.0 at 4 lanes, no hardware encoder and it was only limited to do display outputs. One year later, let's see how this thing performs. And as always, we'll be testing this using our Ryzen 5800X 3D setup, latest drivers at the time of recording with SAM enabled, everything shown here is captured using our capture cards and no performance loss and as always we'll be testing this out in our competitive games warzone 2 fortnite apex legends valorant and lastly pubg okay let's start off with some synthetic benchmarks call of duty modern warfare 2 which is the same engine as warzone 2 and this is 1080p native and 1080p with fsr ultra quality mode turned on we can see that our gpu is already maxed out here regardless on what mode we choose but definitely big difference with fsr turned on we are using fsr quality mode here as it wouldn't make sense to get any lower Check out the difference between the average FPS and 1% lows buoys and definitely there's a significant improvement with FSR turned on. Okay, let's try this with other upscaling modes. Fidelity CAS which just enhances the image quality and XES is which is Intel's open source upscaling technology. However, this does come with significantly worse image quality. Now, from this disk, we can definitely see that the only suitable mode for us to use with the RX 6500 XT at 1080p is with FSR Ultra Quality mode turned on. Okay, let's carry on with actual Warzone 2 gameplay and due to popular demand, I have enabled average FPS, 1% lows and 0.1% low metrics on this run. As mentioned on my other videos, these metrics shouldn't be used to compare a different run because this is not a controlled run, basically a like for like comparison. For the most part, you would need to disregard the 0.1% lows because this is an online game and you'd get those server issues which will make it appear worse in terms of numbers but what you should try to focus on is as always frame times as this graph will tell you if the player is currently experiencing any form of stuttering the more erratic this line is the more stuttery it is in game now we can definitely see that our gpu is maxed out here even with fsr turned on in comparison to the synthetic benchmark our fps here has definitely dropped because of the scale of the map al nazra is definitely huge and look at those stutters we are seeing boys although frame times can be stable on some portions there are some areas where it just looks really bad this card only has four gigabytes of vram and our settings here we've limited it to about 3.7 gigabytes cpu clocks are max out and we are using about 12 gigabytes of our system memory overall this is an okay experience playable but probably not competitive enough i mean look at that one percent lows are definitely not the best but we do reach about 80 to 100 fps here and of course with fsr or any upscaling technology at 1080p you would still still have those issues in visualizing enemies from afar so yeah and before we proceed boys if you like this type of content and want to see more please hit the subscribe button we do these tests in between our pc build specs video guides as this will help us guide you on what paths to get in terms of actual gameplay performance all right let's move on to epic legends and we have trialed our usual competitive settings here and even drop it to lower settings at competitive settings you can see that our gpu is maxed out we can easily reach if is above 150 here and as always try to ignore the 0.1 percent lows on this one because it, this is an online multiplayer game now we can definitely max out our vram here gpu clock is around 80 watts cpu is clocking all the way up to 4450 megahertz here the only thing i've noticed on this mode is that it looks stable when there's nothing going on but once we get into those engagements which what we usually try to focus here on overseer pc as we are competitive then you'd see some stutters on really crucial moments and this is definitely not good okay now this is now with the lowest settings this is definitely better compared to our standard competitive settings although we still have our gpu maxed out so far we are not stuttering as much let's jump onto some actions here and see the difference frame times are definitely much more stable so i'd probably stay on low settings on this one boys in terms of fortnite we have only tested the rx 6500 xd on performance mode here and this is because the new fortnite Bruh. chapter 4 Bruh. is now heavier on any 
any GPU. To properly give this guy the best shot, we have to run this on performance mode. In here, we can see that our GPU is not maxed out and runs at around 70 to 80 percent. GPU power going all the way up to 80 watts. VRAM is at 2 gigabytes, which is good. And because we are not maxing out our GPU, we can take full advantage of our CPU. And this is why we're able to reach 300 FPS comfortably here. And as always, try to ignore the 0.1% lows, please. And um, what I'd always recommend is to focus on our frame times for real world perspective. Fortnite seems to be an okay experience with the RX 6500 XT on performance mode. As mentioned earlier, we didn't try any DX11 or DX12 gameplay here as those modes will use some more GPU resources. But if you want us to dive deeper into that, please let us know in the comment section and we'll look at making a dedicated video with the RX 6500 XT just for Fortnite. Right? For Valorant, we tried our usual competitive settings and also much lower settings in the Icebox map, which is a graphically more intensive compared to the standard maps. We have disabled 1% and 0.1% lows on this test. This is because our main agent is Omen and the numbers get muddled up because of his abilities. On competitive mode, the RX 6500 XT is maxed out and uses about 2.6 GB of VRAM. Now, despite having high FPS and appearing stable on most scenes, with no action, there are still some recognizable stutters on action scenes. This experience gets better when we've gone down to lower settings. Definitely a big difference here on action scenes versus our standard competitive settings. Um, it's much more stable. VRAM did drop around about 300 megabytes here. And yes, this is probably how I'd play this one. Lastly, we have PUBG. And in this case, we have settings geared at low. And like other games, try to disregard the 0.1% lows here. Our frame rate here is around 120 FPS. GPU usage is maxed out. And GPU power seems to go higher than our previous games, which now runs up to 90 watts. The gameplay experience here is okay, but you can see that there are significant stutters on some scenes and this is because our gpu is running at sometimes at 99 percent or basically maxed out on our test last year we have enabled rsr which is the universal version of amd's fsr and that one improved their performance unfortunately at this time we don't have a 1080p monitor available to test our rsr and because this car doesn't have an encoder it would be really difficult to capture this footage with rsr turned on so, one year later, the RX 6500 XT has stayed where we expected it to be. There are games wherein it will run okay. However, it is worth mentioning that RX 6500 XT did get maxed out on most of the competitive games we've tested apart from Fortnite Performance Mode. In 2023, do we recommend the RX 6500 XT? Well, at the current stage of the market, it might be worth saving an extra $50 to get a better product like this one. Or if you want quality used ones with warranty, these will be the ones I would recommend to buy. We'll put links in the pin comments section down below if you want to buy those ones. We'll be doing an $800 PC build guide on our next video. If you're interested on that one, please hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys over there. <laughs>